Welcome to Holistic Wisdom Live. I am Elena Bensonoff, and it is my honor to present to you the first of this series of three of my clients and patients that I've worked with for years. And we're going to discuss a very deeply disturbing and important topic that I believe all the alarms, all the red flags should go up. If you know anyone that has had breast implants, breast augmentation is another name of it, uh, this is a must watch and a must share episode with all of your friends and your loved ones. So we're going to go deep into the stories of the three brave women that are going to share of what happened to them and some of the implications, side effects that have occurred as a result of breast augmentation. But before we begin, I'd like to read some of the research that has been done and some of the data that is currently available. Um, and I'll definitely be putting it below in the show notes. So worldwide, breast augmentation is the most common surgical procedure performed by plastic surgeons, representing 17.6% of all plastic surgical procedures. Of the 1,862,506 breast augmentations performed worldwide in 2018, 17.3% were performed in the United States followed by Brazil at 14.8%, Mexico, 3.8%, Germany, 3.5%, Italy, 3.5%, Argentina, 27 and Colombia, 23 Similarly, breast augmentation continues to be the most common cosmetic surgical procedure in the United States, with over 313,000 augmentations performed in 2018, a 48 percent increase since the year of 2000. There were 365,000 breast augmentations performed in 2021, which is a 44 percent increase. In addition, 148,000 women had implants removed. It's also called explants, which we'll discuss today, and replaced uh, by 32 percent increase from 2020. And 71 1,000 had their implants removed and not replaced, which is also increased by 47%. Surgical procedures accounted for 69% of all revenue, despite being just 21% of total procedures. Studies of saline breast implants and silicone gel breast implants conducted by implant manufacturers have shown that within the first three years, approximately three out of four reconstruction of breast cancer patients and almost half of the first time augmentation patients experience at least one local complication. And, you know, this is such a huge topic, which you'll see we're going to dive deep into before I give you more statistics. But I've been noticing over the years, so many chronic conditions are coming up and showing up as mystery symptoms, which we'll dive deep into today and in the future episodes. Silicone breast implants were approved for the first time in November 2006. Between 1992 and 2006, silicone implants were restricted to clinical trials that were primarily for cancer patients and women with broken implants. The FDA required that patients be informed that the implants were not approved by the FDA and to be regularly evaluated by their plastic surgeons as part of the study. In order to provide safety data, intended to help all women with gel implants. Unfortunately, there were no enforcements of that requirement and women who were enrolled in these studies to enable them to get breast implants were often not studied after the surgery. Silicone breast implants made by two manufacturers were approved in November of 2006 and gel implants made by one to two other manufacturers was approved subsequently. There are still restrictions, however. For example, they're only approved for women over the age of 22 because younger women are still developing physically and emotionally and probably would not fully understand the risks. In 2011, the FDA began tracking cases of cancer of the immune system linked to the textured breast implants known as breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. 
Over the next several years, as studies were completed, FDA and medical experts recognized that rather than just possibly associated with ALCL, breast implants caused actually this anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and that the risk was higher among women with textured breast implants. In 2019, Allergan recalled their biocell textured implants worldwide following growing evidence of the risk of BIA-ALCL, which is a type of cancer that I just listed above, for women with those implants. At the same time, the recall of the recall, the FDA reported 573 cases of the cancer worldwide and had been reported since 2011. And this known total increased to 1,130 in 2022. In September of 2022, so just what, six months or less, the FDA announced new information about other cancers related to breast implants, various other lymphomas, as well as squamous cell carcinoma. At this time, at the time of the announcement, the FDA had received 10 reports about breast implant related SCC, which is squamous cell carcinoma, and 12 reports about lymphomas other than ALCL, like BIA, ALCL. These cancer cells all were found in the scar capsule surrounding the breast implant, which is why experts believe the implants are the cause. The implants involved were saline and silicone, textured and smooth. So there's many complications as far as implants, including autoimmune disorders, joint, chronic kind of unexplained mystery symptoms. So if you, if you or any of your friends have had plastic surgery or breast augmentation, please, please share this very important video. And my next guest is going to join us in a second. So welcome today's first guest that is here with me is beautiful Christine. Christine, I think has been exploring health and wellness for a few years and uh, is also in the real estate world in Florida. Christine has been a client, a patient of mine. I actually lost track how many years has been for at least four years, right? Probably since 2018 when I contacted you, but actually I think I contacted you in 2017 about your perfume, but then working uh, on 2018. Okay. So that's it. So about four years going on fifth year. And Here's a backstory of why I believe this is such an important story. And thank you so much, Christine, for being so brave. Yeah. Years ago, when I worked with my patients and clients, I never used to ask if people had breast implants. It never even occurred for me to ask people that question. I just assumed, you know, a person looks natural. That's how it is. And then the, there was a pattern that began to develop. And actually the series, the three interviews that I'll be presenting publicly are all of the cases of women who look absolutely natural, but had, all of them had breast implants and all had very similar patterns. And those patterns were mystery symptoms and chronic things that would just not go away. And uh, you were one of those women. And I remember you were coming in and you were saying to me, my throat keeps closing up. I have a hard time swallowing. And I don't even remember how the conversation started. And we'll go to this conversation later on. But perhaps you remember of what was the aha moment that you decided to share that you had the implants. And where would you like to begin? Would you like to begin with when you had the implants done? and the things you've experienced throughout life? And then what was it that led you to share with me the story? And then I connected you to one of the women I'll actually be interviewing as well, who shared with you who would be a good option, right? A good doctor to explant. Well, I think it's important first to talk about why some women get breast implants, because I feel like it's kind of that, not everyone's in the same position, so I think you have a lot of people, especially younger women getting them because they just want larger breasts and they've perfectly great breasts and, and they want larger breasts. And that's, that's one group. Um, of course I should be gentle when I say that I don't mean any disrespect by that. Um, I am, I had two children breastfed two babies and had mastitis. And so by the time 
after my second child was born, my breasts had gotten so enlarged from that mastitis that they just did not go back at all to where I would have liked. So I went to see a plastic surgeon. I was 27 at the time and basically just said, hey, what do you think? You know, is there anything that can be done? And it was recommended to me instead of getting, say, a lift to go and get implants to fill in that space. And of course, that was a time in my life when I was extremely trusting of anything someone told me, especially a physician. I didn't really go back and do any research because I felt like, OK, I'm going to a doctor. They're going to know what's best for me. So I had the surgery and I can just remember waking up and feeling like, oh, my gosh, this is not me. This is huge. It did fill up the cavity of extra skin, but I just feel like I never felt really great about it. And that was just my personal experience. But life kind of got, got busy and things with kids. And I just kept the implants in, never really liking them because I feel like they always made me feel bigger than I was. It just closed didn't fit great. Um, but I think deep down, I'm, I've always been kind of an intuitive person, someone that's really tries to be in touch with my health. And I think as I started to get older, I started to, I don't know, that sort of became something I was always searching for. And I think in the back of my mind, I always felt like this was not something I needed to keep anymore. Um, and I can't remember at what point um, we discussed it, but I think it was, I was doing all the protocols and I was getting better. So for me, one of my biggest symptoms, I was having immune system response. I was having um, you know, histamine issues. So I would eat food that I normally didn't react to. And while it wasn't a full on true allergy, it was just raising the histamine in my body. Um, and then I would start out, I would get hives, I would get the, the throat tightness, um, heart palpitations, just feeling really, really bad. And I suffered with that for years, but working with you it really helped me get more control of like the foods that were bothering me and some of the other things. But while the implants were in, I think they were just still just making my body toxic. So I think one time we had a discussion about um, just my progress. And I think I just casually mentioned to you, I think I need to get these implants out. And you were like, what? You never said anything. No. And, it, and then it was, it was kind of that feeling where I think women, we just don't talk about it enough. It's, sometimes we're embarrassed about it or we feel uncomfortable about it. I've gotten to the point now where I just love to tell my story. I love to just put it out there because I never was embarrassed about it, but I didn't know like the right way to bring it up. And I guess maybe I didn't think to bring it up until then. But once you connected me with that support group on Facebook and I started reading different stories about other people and how their healing process was it really just the light bulb went off and I was like this is exactly what's going on and it was during kind of that COVID process of time so I was it was hard to make an appointment you know you had to go through all these steps but I ended up getting it done in 2021 in August and I will say for me within two weeks I was so much better and and I don't know that everyone has that um, story. I think because mine was an immune system thing, maybe the removal of it was more instant than some people who have maybe different symptoms present. Cause I, I think that's the big thing. People would hear my story and they would hear my symptoms and they would be different from theirs potentially. And then they would think, oh, well then that's not what's going on with me. And, and I think from my, you know, I'm not the expert here, but I feel like from my experience, I think everyone's body is going to respond a little bit differently, but inflammation and toxicity and all of that is definitely there presenting itself. So um, I'm just so thankful. Um, the silver lining of it all was that I had, I went ahead and when I had them removed, I had the lift that I probably was the only thing I ever needed and I'm just aesthetically so happy with how it came out too. And that wasn't the reason I did it, but it was just so nice to feel better, to be healthy, to aesthetically like what I, who I am with that. And um, to kind of come to terms with the fact that um, they were, they never belonged in my body and, and that was a mistake. And, you know, I've had a lot of setbacks because of it. So I really want to be vocal to other women um, you know, and it's, you have to be careful, I think, like what I say, I don't want to hurt people's feelings, because some people may not be to that point in their life where they think that's causing the problem, or they may 
think that that will make them happy if they get the implants. Um, but I like to share my story so at least they know that this is something that's happening. And I'm very against implants altogether, but everyone's at a different, you know, phase of their understanding of, of their health. So yes, yeah. connection, really connecting the physical body and how important it is to take care of our health. And this is a big hindrance in so many ways. Now, of course, the FDA last September had issued a major black box warning, which warns that it's linked to autoimmune diseases and cancer and joint inflammation, of course, is one of those or mystery symptoms. I did want to ask you because you did share an image, which we'll pull up on the screen. Um, what did the doctor discover when she did the explant surgery? So to remove the implants, it's called explants, right? Explant surgery. So what, what did she discover that she shared with you? So just to let you know, I found a doctor through that Facebook group. They have certain ones they recommend. You want to not only have the explant, but you want to make sure that the capsule is completely removed. And again, um, I'm Would not you mind sharing the name of that group so people know what is what the name yeah, is? The let me look it up because it's it's basically the Facebook group that we talked about. I just need to get the exact name. Let me see if I can locate that real quick. Um, so it's called Breast Implant Illness and Healing by Nicole. So I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Um, it has 174,000 members, and this is just one Facebook group. So I mean, that goes to show you right there. It's not like three or four people saying they have breast implant illness, right? It's, it's definitely something that a lot of people struggle with. Sorry about that. Um, so um, basically through there, I learned that not only are you looking for a doctor that can remove them, but you probably want to go to someone who does this frequently so they understand what's, you know, what they need to do, but there's a capsule. So that capsule covers the implant and it's the body's, I think it's, it's basically was described to me that the scar tissue that the body builds around the implant to protect the body from the implant. And so that capsule absolutely has to also be removed. And some plastic surgeons, when they do explant surgery, they don't believe in removing it. They think it's not helpful, but the toxins kind of reside in that capsule and there's a lot of women that get the explant that don't remove remove the capsule that remains sick so i found a doctor close to me i'm in tampa she's in sarasota she's also a microsurgeon and it was a good thing i went to her because my case was i did not present with pain something that with a normal uh, rupture would um it felt normal. I had MRI, not MRIs. I had um, just mammograms. Nothing ever showed anything. I think you would have had to have some more extensive like mam um, MRIs to be able to have seen it. But when she opened me up, my whole left side was completely ruptured. So it was still within the capsule. The capsule was very, very thick. And I mean, the pictures will show, but the left side had completely turned a different color. It turned yellow. Um, I got to see the implants after the surgery and when I went for my post uh, checkup and it was really disgusting. I mean, it almost looked like the texture of honey or syrup just covering the implant. It was almost like it was just deteriorating, just gooey, gross. So all of that was exposed to my body. And I can remember my surgeon telling me, you know, throwing these implants around like the sample ones that they had saying they're indestructible, you can't break them, you know, there's nothing that's going to happen, but they can rupture. And when they do rupture, um, they may not leak out like a saline would, but they, they basically just break apart and all that stuff is just kind of exposed. And um, it, I can remember crying um, in the car ride home because I just knowing that I put that in my body, that that's what happened. And I think it was the seeing that capsule and how thick it had become, knowing that my body was trying so hard to protect me from something that I purposely put in there. And, and that just, that was painful to see, but also very um, encouraging to know that my body was trying, you know, my body was trying to heal. It wasn't going to let me, um, it was going to try to do everything it could to protect me. It just, I needed to get them out. And um, I'm just so thankful that 
you pointed me in that direction. I think I knew that it was there, but you got me to the right places to kind of get them out in the proper way. Um, I will also mention that my surgeon has done over 3,000 of these explants, and she said my case was probably top five, one of the worst mm -hmm. ruptures that was so messy and so difficult for her to get out. She worked on it for a very long time, and being that she was a microsurgeon was really helpful because she was able to really work hard to get that full capsule out because if she had broke the capsule inside my body, I mean, it would have been a lot more... Um, toxins unleashed into my body when the mm -hmm. surgery was taking place so wow you know christine this is just also a great reminder how important it is to have this conversation absolutely for women that have them in their bodies and have unexplained symptoms I actually had somebody recently reach out to me and say you know i'm, I'm having severe joint pain and I, I did ask i said do you have breast implants and she said yes but they're it's not connected and i said oh yes it is uh, now it's in the literature. And this is the, the beauty of having females in our lives, right? And having that conversation and trusting and knowing that, you know, when this information is shared, it's not to harm another human being, but it's really to meant to support and give options of what is possible and take these things out of the body as quickly as possible. I think it's a weird subject, um, personally, uh, just with the way women deal with it, because for whatever reason that they got the implants in the first place, I think they don't want that to be the problem. Mm -hmm. So they'll look for any other excuse to lie to themselves that it's not that it's not connected. It can't be that because they really just don't want it to be that. And, and I think we've all been, any one of us that have had implants, I think have been there. But I think you just have to look at things in the way that I always tell people, look at things logically. I mean, whether the doctor tells you it's not connected or they're safe, do you really think that something should be in our bodies that doesn't belong there, that wasn't intended to be in there? I mean, it's a very basic question that I think we all know deep down, no, but women, when they make that decision or they have them, they just, I think we have all been through a period where we lied to ourselves to say it can't be that because they just don't want it to be that. But yes, you know, you know based on statistics too, um, I actually mentioned it in the beginning that United States, and I'll mention it again, is actually at the top, at the very top of as far as percentage of how many women go for this kind of surgery. So globally, we're at 17.3%, whereas then it's followed by Brazil at 14, Mexico by three, Germany 3%, Italy 3 Argentina 2.7, Colombia 2.3. So you can see how um, it's fascinating also, I would say culturally, how we view, women view their bodies, right? Depending on the demographics and, in the United States, unfortunately, it's at the highest level around the world. So this is a big red flag too. Mm. I will tell you, I mean, this might be inappropriate, but I do remember my husband, um, because I've been married twice. So my, my second husband met me when I already had my implants. And I can remember, um, he's from Europe. And I mean, he just used to always tell me, you know, you don't need that. Like, and, you know, I think he was always, he was never, he was always loving and caring and said nothing but compliments to me, but he was, he was of the mentality that, you know, women need to have their natural bodies and it's okay for your breasts to have had babies and be saggy and that be it. I mean, I think he was always of a different mindset because that was a different culture. And I feel like he was so supportive of me through my process. And even if I had chosen not to get a lift, I mean, I think he would have totally loved me and said really nice things. And I think when I would read, so it was, it's really disturbing. I will tell you um, for women, if you read some of the other women's posts, um, it's, it's really shocking how many women will say that their husbands are against them getting them removed. Yes. And they will say really, um, it's just shocking. I mean, it's shocking. These women are going through a lot. They're, they're suffering. And so many men are then saying it's not that, but you shouldn't get them out because they're going to look horrible if you get them out. And that's not all men. I'm, I will say many men are extremely supportive. 
but that's, I mean, when we talk about a demographic and we talk about, you know, these sure. things, I mean, yes. that's pretty damaging for women to hear that about their bodies, you know? So then yes. it makes you wonder what was the reason they got them in the first place? Mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. someone else happy or themselves? Yes, this is a great question. And there's so much, I'm sure. It would be fascinating to talk to uh, psychologists who also have to, you know, have to work with women who are going through through these difficulties. It's wonderful that you had a spouse that was supportive, and I think he went there with you, right? He was driving. Oh my gosh, he was there with you, and he was there taking care of me the whole time. Um, and then afterwards, helping me with my first bath, like all the things that I needed. And I feel very blessed to have that. And I feel like every woman deserves to have. Um, if they're going to have someone in their life, if they choose that, that they have someone that supports them. Yes, that's wonderful. Christine, thank you so much for your story. It's a beautiful story. And I'm so proud of you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share it. And I, can I say one more thing? Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I, so I have a daughter who's 19 and she has a lot of her friends and, and I have always like been very open with all of them because that's that younger generation. I feel like so important for us to make sure that every woman, no matter what size breast they have, that they feel beautiful and that they feel authentic and that they know that however they were born, whatever size they are, that they're wonderful just they, the way they are. And I think it's important to start making sure that our daughters and the women around us feel that way and know that way, because um, there's always going to be need for reconstruction. And I think that's kind of a different topic because that's very sad when women you know, have to have their breasts completely removed from cancer and they're trying to do implants and all of that. Um, but there is a whole group of people that do it because they want to just be larger. Or they think it will make them be more beautiful. And I think it's so important for us to just make sure we're aware to let these women know that they're beautiful, just how they are. Yes. Thank you for, and also I would say for, for moms who have sons to oh, all yeah. teach their sons to deeply appreciate and honor each, each woman. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Thank you for that last message. I think you hit it right on. It's important. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.